A new push tonight to dob in a dumper to help clean up the state's waterways. Hundreds, possibly thousands of cars have been dumped in our lakes, rivers and the harbour, causing safety and pollution problems. There's oils, toxic metals uh, and just a whole pile of pollutants going into the river, as well as it's a very unsafe thing for boaties and for kids that are swimming and so on. The NRMA says many of the cars have been used for insurance fraud or other organised criminal activities. The state's prison officers are on strike, claiming that not enough is being done to protect them from violent inmates. It means thousands of prisoners will remain locked in their cells until tomorrow morning. Ken Sutcliffe with Sport is next, and Steve Wall will be missing from the one-day side to take on England. Jimmy couldn't even make it into the 30-man squad for the World Cup next year. Also, Australian golf cops another black eye. And Russia's historic Davis Cup victory. Coming up, dangerous ovens, exploding without warning at any temperature. Yeah. Plus, drag-free therapy to beat fears and phobias. And teenage mums back at school teaching the facts of life. A current affair after the news. Steve Waugh's international one-day career is officially over, with the test captain left out of the 30-man squad for next year's World Cup in South Africa. The news comes after Australia easily won the Ashes series with victory in the third test. Needing 271 just to make the Aussies bat again, England was all out for 223. And Jim, it's official as of today, Alan Langer has retired from Rugby League. Is it in writing? Uh, he won't be coming back. <laughs> Good on you, Ken. After the break, Georgie Gardner with all the weather details. Coming up, more and more faulty ovens exploding without any warning. Plus, the woman refusing to take out a tongue stud, even if it costs her her job. Next. Good evening. Right now, 23 degrees, and as you can see, a beautiful evening in Sydney. A fine and sunny day across Sydney today. The city's temperature peaked at 24, which was one down on the average. A fly south over the metropolitan area indicates there wasn't much cloud around, and temperatures were generally close to average. Richmond got to 33, a degree cooler at Liverpool. The central coast reached 27, as did the Blue Mountains. Tonight's satellite map has some clouds sitting over the centre of the continent. There's a front over western Victoria that's heading toward New South Wales and should reach the south coast late tomorrow. It'll bring with it the chance of thunderstorms in the southwestern half of the state, but nothing in the way of rain. Then a wind change behind that front will result in cooler temperatures about midweek. To interstate forecasts, and Canberra might get a late thunderstorm. Showers for Melbourne and Hobart, mainly fine for Adelaide, while Perth and Brisbane can both expect fine conditions. Sydney is in for a fine warm to hot day with freshening northwest to northeasterlies. The sun will rise just before 20 to 6 and set at 8 minutes to 8. We can expect a top of 31 in the city, a warm day ahead for the west with temperatures up to 39. Gosford should reach 33 at 20, 29 on the way for Katoomba. The outlook for Wednesday is fine and 28 degrees, then staying fine on Thursday and Friday, just a bit cooler. And as summer officially begins, you might be interested to know, Jim, that Sydney recorded its warmest spring on record. And dare I say it, the driest. That's right. Thanks, Georgie. That's the news this Monday night. I'm Jim Whaley from all of us here at National Nine News. Good night. Third test match at the White House.